In this movie, I'll cover the visual and interactive improvements in both the Object Lister and the Layer Categories Editor. I'll start with some simple visual improvements to the Object Lister window in Alias 2012, compared to previous versions. First, arrows now replace the lines and the plus signs in the layer list, and a simple arrow is now used to open and close all the layers. The colours have been made stronger and easier to distinguish, and there is now the option in the general preferences to display both the name and the number of the layer. The most significant visual and interactive change, however, is the introduction of a new embedded option to the object lister window. And I'll start by looking at this. The object lister is good for scrolling through lots of layers, and for reading long layer names. But it can sometimes take up too much space on the screen, obscuring your model. The layers bar is less obtrusive, sitting up here above the geometry. But it's harder to use when there's lots of layers, as the scrolling is less controllable. So to get the best of both worlds, I can now use the new embedded option for the object lister, which places it in a pop-out window at the left of the screen. I have a choice to either click to close the window, and then click to open it. Or I can select Auto Hide by clicking here, and the window will automatically close when I move away from it, and open when I pass over it, with no need to click. I can move the window, and I can resize it, and I can close it by clicking on the cross at the bottom. And I've now added it to my marking menu to be able to quickly open it again. The second big interaction improvement is the ability to now drag and drop within the object lister window. Here some of my layers are out of sequence, so I can simply use the middle mouse button to drag and drop them into the right position, and this makes organising my layers much quicker. I can also drag and drop objects as well as layers. Here in the fender layer I've only got one object, so I might choose to drag this into the whole superstructure layer, and here it is. And I can delete the empty layer using a new command on the layer submenu, which deletes the selected layer. And there's also a new Insert Layer option that lets me position a new layer directly in the Object Lister window. So if I want a Dex layer, for example, I can just drag those two Dex nodes into my new layer. And while I'm looking at objects, there are some useful improvements here too. Firstly, I can now toggle the visibility of an object by simply clicking on its icon. Secondly, I now have the full object menu available in the Layers view. So for example, I can group these two together, whereas previously I would have had to switch to Show by Object to get that full menu. Drag and drop can also be used when working with layer categories. If I create a new category, say for just the superstructure, I can then choose the layers I want, and now I can drag them into the category and isolate just those layers using the right mouse button. If I now create some more categories, I'll need to be able to list all the layers again in the object lister, so that I can choose them for the new categories. And there are some new tools at the top of the categories window, so I can use show all to bring back all the layers, and then I can very quickly use the drag and drop to populate the categories. Now, at the top of the Layer Categories window, there's a new Uncategorized Layers section. And if I isolate this group, I can very quickly see that I missed some of the Flydeck layers. So now I can just drag those back into the right category. So the Object Lister and the Layer Categories together are a great way to manage large datasets like this. And the new drag and drop makes the process much more direct and intuitive. But the techniques are also useful when you're working on a range of alternatives, like this packaging design project. Here I've used a single wire file for all the packs. 
and I've used categories to manage all these layers into separate designs. If I switch to the first category, you can see that one of the layers here is in the inactive state. If I go to the next category, one of the layers is set to reference. And on this one, this layer is turned off. So now, switching between categories respects those layer states and doesn't change them. Previously, all the layers were made visible and pickable when you chose their category. So this makes working with categories much more user-friendly. Another improvement is that I can now use the Alt key and click on the eyeball icon to do an isolate, which makes switching between categories much quicker. And then finally, there are some new hotkey settings in the Preferences under Special and Generally Useful Functions. You can set a hotkey to isolate the next category, the previous one, or to show all the categories. And this means that I can work without the windows open and use the hotkeys to cycle through the different categories. I think this will be particularly useful if you want to work, for example, in a full screen mode or when doing a presentation of design alternatives or a range of products. All these improvements mean that we now have easier ways to organize large and complex models. The object lister can now be embedded, making it easily accessible and compact on the screen. Drag and drop with the middle mouse button makes managing the window much easier as does the addition of Insert and Delete layer. And you can now toggle object visibility using the object icon. We can also drag and drop into the Layer Categories window. And now switching categories maintains the individual layer states. There's a new shortcut to isolate categories, and new hotkey settings for quickly moving between them.